Hi, my name is Cormac. Welcome to Cormac's Kitchen. We're in the National Yacht Club today and we're going to have a linguine puttanesca uh, that we're going to use uh, some nice linguine, uh, cherry tomatoes, some chopped garlic, lots of fresh garlic, some wild Argentinian prawns, and we're going to finish that off with some uh, nice coriander, freshly chopped coriander, and some chopped chives. We're going to serve it also with uh, a nice crusty French baguette, fresh but not too fresh, all from Cavistons and Glass Tool, of course. And we're going to serve that with a chilled petit pot from Languedoc. For a main course, we're going to do a deconstructed uh, shellfish risotto with hake cutlets, using lovely fresh cutlets of tail cuts of hake. And we're going to also finish that with uh, some nice chopped tomatoes. We're using Breton onions, a lovely rose Breton onion, some nice new potatoes, a scallop of new potatoes, snow peas, haricot blanc. The very last thing that we put in there are the clams and roaring water bay mussels. That's going to be uh, all served in one pot, not unlike a risotto, but it's going to be all coming from the National Yacht Club in Dunleary. Our starter tonight, today, is pasta puttanesca. And I don't know how your Italian is, but uh, it refers to ladies of the night. The reason why is because it's so quick and easy to make. So you can uh, have a quick, quick supper and get to work. So I've taken the, the cooked pasta, put it into just boiling water, and now I'll take the prawns, some nice extra virgin olive oil, our wild Argentinian prawns, olive oil in the pan, prawns on top, shaky shaky, I don't know how to say that in Italian, does anybody know how to say that in Italian? And just because I can, I'm going to take some butter that is soft, but not too soft, put that in as well. And if anybody gets the movie reference, I'll give them a prize. Garlic, freshly chopped garlic. <clears throat> Very nice. And put that in too. Let's give it a chance to start cooking. A little sauce. Very nice uh, wild Argentinian prawns caught from the sea, the real sea. Uh, off the coast of Argentina, right at the mouth of the River Plate. And now we put our garlic, freshly chopped garlic. Lots of that, lots of that. And then we put three tomatoes. And like I say, we just give them a little bit of brutality, a bit of a squeeze. Mind the goon the dark and uh, freshly crushed black pepper. More olive oil, like you can. And a little bit of white wine. The wine today, in case I didn't mention it, it's Petit Paul from Languedoc. And now we take our, our heated linguine, put that on top. Look at that. I'll give it one more shake. And our freshly chopped, freshly chopped herbs. That's ready to go. It's called linguine puttanesca because it's quick 
and easy to do so as you can go back to work. And today we've come from the National Yacht Club. And so we get now to present our pasta putanesca. And I'm just doing a starter size portion. You can do, you can feed a horse or a, or a mouse with this. Uh, it's as much or as little as you like. And uh, really quick, easy meal. Have as much or as little as you like and go back to work. Thanks very much. Right now we're going to be doing the risotto and this is the, the main part of the meal. For that we're going to be using olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. As I explained to you before, you put it on the side of the pot so as it doesn't burn. Lots of that. And now you're making a risotto or a paella. Always have lots of, lots of oil. Some nice rose onions, a little bit of chopped celery, put that in there too. And I have a wooden spoon, give that a shake. So, next thing we have the sliced chorizo, put that in there. Sizzle, sizzle, pop, pop. I like a bit of butter. It just gives it more flavour. And as soon as our onions and garlic have become translucent, then we put in then we put in the rice, the arborio rice. Some people like to make the onions brown before they put it into the rice. But um, that's a different, that's a different culture. Some nice arborio rice, rice of the forest, isn't it? Yeah. And we've also got the stock that we have left over from the uh, from the hake that we cooked earlier. We're going to be using that. Give that a little bit of a stir. Some nice. Freshly crushed black pepper. I said mold and sea salt, but I'm quite happy with this fleur de sel, baleen. It's a nice flowery uh, sea salt. And that goes in there as well. I always like to fry the rice just a little bit. Just to get it cooking and smoked paprika. Loads of flavor in that. I'm putting it in now because I like to cook, cook the flavor out of the spice. If you give any spice a quick bang of flavor, a quick, quick bang of heat, you pull the flavor out of it. That's your chopped tomatoes, chopped in tomatoes. I'm going to be putting fresh tomatoes in at the end. And you notice I'm using a paella dish because it gives a much greater surface area. Let those tomatoes start cooking. So it's all nicely seasoned. We've got pretty much all the seasoning that's necessary in there now because you're going to get a lot of flavor from the, uh, the shellfish and the uh, stock that we took out of the cooked cake. So, a little bit of white wine. Now, 
and then you're stuck. You can add gradually your stock in. <coughs> there is a, a, a rule of thumb where you put, you measure out, say, one cup of, of uh, risotto rice, and you put two and a half cups of stock, or uh, water, whatever it is you need, um, and then conversely, or then conversely, you can uh, put the, the stock in gradually as you're cooking, and just take it to the point where you're happy. Uh, the consistency of any risotto, paella, uh, whatever dish you like using up Oreo rice, I think, should have the consistency of lava, like flowing, slow flowing lava. We cooked that just gently for 10 minutes, and now it's time to add our shellfish. Here's our lovely clams, and we've soaked them so that there's no errant sand left in them. And if we have a responsible clam digger, um, they will make sure that they eliminate the sand by soaking them as well, preferably in seawater, but you can soak them in, in fresh water. So that's the clams. Now a few mussels, roaring water bay mussels, they're lovely. Now you notice that I'm leaving a bit of space around the middle because that's where our heat is going to go. And I'm also taking into consideration how much water is going to come out of the, the shellfish because that is going to have a big impact on the rice. So you don't want it to be too dry, you don't want it to be too wet. You see now by shaking it, you kind of drop your, your shellfish down into the rice. Give a little bit of a scrape. If you can just see that little window that I'm opening up each time, to make sure that the rice is not sticking to the bottom of the uh, of the tray. You see how hungry that rice is? Sorry, thirsty. <laughs> that it's it's soaking up the uh, the water, even as it's coming out of the shellfish. It's soaking up the water. So now, I'm going to put in the hake. This I've kept warm. Put it in there. Make sure that it's sitting snugly on the bottom of the bowl. Introducing the water to it as you need it, as you need it. We have a special lid, which is here. Now, I don't care what kind of lid you do, use, so long as it comfortably covers the pot. Yeah? And I'm going to set that on there. And that will help accelerate the cooking process just for a few minutes. Say, five minutes and then we add in the last ingredients. So, here we now, we're gonna put in our potatoes, which are parboiled. There's just a little al dente left on them, and we'll uh, slide them in, so that they become part of the, of the greater, uh, the greater sovereign Unified territory of the deconstructed, the deconstructed risotto, shellfish risotto, with fresh hake cutlets, and this creation is designed and researched by none other than Peter the fishmonger. I don't know if you're aware of who Peter the fishmonger is, but he knows who he is, just in case you don't. So if you're not aware of who Peter is, Peter the fishmonger, um, you could send your questions on a Stampton addressed envelope to uh, Cavistons of Glass 2. Everything 
It's just about cooked at this point. So I'm going to take some of these cherry tomatoes and just do that with them. Brutalize them. Just give them a little bit of a squish and throw them into the throw them in on top. And at this point, we're just adding the final touches. These I'm going to put into a chauffeur, which is um, just boiling water, that's all. The prawns, sit them on top. A little bit more of our lovely hake stock. Our prawns. Here's our sugar snaps. Look at the color on those. Beautiful, beautiful color. And the penultimate ingredient is our freshly chopped herbs. And for the very last thing, capers. Oh, baby capers. We'll sit them in there. So, this is the dish. It's a shellfish risotto with cutlets of fresh silver hake, escalloped new Irish potatoes, and haricot blanc finished with sugar snaps. And it's coming from the National Yacht Club in Dunleary. Here we go. We're going to uh, now serve our shellfish risotto with uh, escalloped potatoes and cutlets of fresh silver hake and haricot blanc served of course with some nice crevettes some uh, crusty bread that goes there and a nice longer duck petit pole to wash it all down thank you very much from Cormac's Kitchen. Goodbye from Cormac's Kitchen until next week.